Hi, I'm Larry Geller, and I was Elvis Presley's personal hairstylist. But more importantly, more significantly, we were friends. We had a deep spiritual connection, and here we are today because Sue Marino invited me to speak with you. Thank you very much, Sue, who's a dear friend. I want to thank Reverend Fred for allowing me to have these moments with you as well. You know, Elvis Presley is turning 80 years old now, but not really, because Elvis is timeless. I can't wrap around my head that Elvis is 80 years old. That image of Elvis Presley is going to live throughout the ages, I'm sure of that. You know, Elvis and I bonded the first moment we met. I came over to his house back in 1964 to style his hair. After I finished, we got into a deep conversation that lasted about three hours. Immediately, Elvis asked me questions about life and death and the soul, and I told him about my background in reading spiritual books and meditating and praying. And people didn't do this much back in those days. This was just the beginning of the 60s. And Elvis began to tell me about his life, growing up as a child and how he was born in, in poverty, like most people have never experienced in their lives. Elvis was born in a shack, literally, that had no electricity, no light bulbs, no phones. They didn't even have running water. They had a, a well outside where they had to fetch uh, and bring it in with a pail. Elvis had a twin brother. His name was Jesse Guerin, who was stillborn. And Elvis said to me, Larry, you have no idea what a mystery this has been my whole life. Why me? Why me? Why was I chosen? Why not my twin brother? Why was I plucked? He went like this. Why was I plucked out of all the millions and millions of lives to become Elvis Presley? I don't believe in coincidence. There's got to be a reason. I've always believed in something. I always knew there was a God. I've always felt an unseen hand guiding my life. And that's the way it's got to be. And you know, Elvis the man, in relation to Elvis the image, is worlds apart. And Elvis used to say, he said, I'm not that image. That's part of me, but I'm a real person. I'm a real person, just like everyone else that's searching for truth. And several years later, Elvis decided he wanted to let the people know, outside of all the movies he was making, which he became a little bit embarrassed about, because he knew they were teeny bopper type movies. And he wanted people to know that he was coming from a very special spiritual place. And he decided to create a spiritual album. And here's the man that has sold more records and albums and CDs than any group or individual that has ever performed. And he won the Grammy, the highest award possible in music, for his spiritual album, How Great Thou Art. And I'll never forget that night. We were on our way to RCA Victor, and we were in Elvis's bedroom. And he said, Larry, sit down, man. I gotta tell you something. I am not going to use this voice, this God-given voice, until my ego is out of the way. I am not gonna sing one note until I'm in touch with that still, small voice within that we all have. I got to get my ego out of the way. This is not rock and roll music. This is not another uh, song from one of my albums from a movie. We don't know who's going to listen to this music. Even if one person is touched, then I will have done my job. And that's what we did. We meditated. We prayed for about 15 minutes. We went to the studio. 
And every person in the studio that night has said that they felt such a presence when Elvis sang. And he sang How Great Thou Art on one take. Now, 10 years later, we were on tour. We were in Florida. And we walked into the hotel and one of Elvis's fans came up to me. She was covered with Elvis buttons and patches on her cap and her, on her blouse and her jeans. And she, I said to her, and her name was Darlene. I said, Darlene, I see you everywhere we go and you're always covered with Elvis. Why? How does this all start with you? What are you doing? And she proceeded to tell me her story. She said, Larry, you can see that I'll never have a boyfriend or possibly get married. I'll never have children. She had a beautiful, angelic face with big blue eyes. But from the waist down, you can see she was physically challenged. And she told me that when she was eight years old, she fell down a flight of stairs and it fractured her spine to the point where she went through 15 surgeries. She took pills and drugs and shots and doctors, stays in the hospital. And she grew up and she was about 21, 22. And she said, I couldn't, I, I decided to end my life. I had nothing to live for. I had the pills on my table. I had a note that I wrote to my family and the radio was on. And all of a sudden, I heard Elvis singing, How Great Thou Art. Larry, she said, I fell to my knees and I felt that this light came into me. I started to un cry on, I couldn't stop crying. I was out of control. And all I knew was God touched me. He wanted me to live. And it was all because of Elvis Presley. I said, Darlene, that is an incredible story. I told her about how, what Elvis said before he recorded the, the album. I said, but I gotta go upstairs to see Elvis, he's waiting for me. And I went upstairs and I told Elvis, he was so moved, tears were rolling down his cheeks. He said, Larry, I needed to hear that. You have no idea because I'm going through a lot myself right now. He said, I'm not into this just for the fame and the money. This is what I'm all about. All I want to do is touch people's lives. That's what it's all about. That's why I'm here. I'm not a preacher. I'm an entertainer. That's what God gave me. All I want to do is lift people and bring joy into their lives. And you know, what we have today on this day of Elvis's birthday, his 80th birthday, his image, his music, the force of his personality is unlike any entertain, entertainer in the history of the entertainment world because he has touched lives in such a profound way. And this is a testimony to what his life was all about. He came here, he did what he was supposed to do, and now he's where he's supposed to be. And I wanna thank you again, Sue, and Reverend Fred, and I wanna wish everyone a very healthy, joyful, and rewarding 2015. Thank you.